Good morning, everybody. Big day here, last day in New York before I gotta head back. Gotta head back tonight, not even staying the night tonight. I'm leaving late, but uh, big day ahead. First stop, right here, New York Transit Museum. It is in an old subway station, a long since decommissioned subway station. Tons of old trains, original trains, old buses, all about the history of New York Transit. This is gonna be a great time. We're gonna go ahead down there real fast and then we'll move on to the next thing. But first stop, the Transit Museum. days which started in 1900. The 1900 era surveyors compass. So right when they were digging things out in the shallow parts right under the street they would dig out a trench in the street dig out what they needed for the station and the track and then cover back up and move along to the next section. This one is pretty amazing. The City Hall Station. It has arches and very elaborate. There's also a curved track section. You can see where it curves around. Eventually, the station was closed partially because of the curved platform and the longer trains, the center doors would not open uh, directly on the platform. There would be a huge gap. And so eventually, the station was closed. It sits abandoned now. There is a train that goes through it at the end of one of the lines. They restored it about 10 or 15 years ago. And every so often, the New York Transit Museum holds tours so that you can go check out the City Hall. If you have some spare time, you really should ride the train and go by it. It's, it's lit up now and it's really nice. It's a cool little uh, video here talking about uh, a few different aspects of the image in the subway from 9-11 and rebuilding. And when they rebuilt the tunnels that were damaged, they actually used the original 1904 drawings of the tunnels in the station and decided to just make it exactly as it was. It also has a lot of uh, information about the uh, hurricanes and the blizzard and responses to uh, some different sections of the transit system, how it was affected during uh, some of these big storms. There's a lot of kids here, some sort of school thing, so it's a little chaotic. Stepping in gum. Would you want to be the person ticked off Superman by putting gum on the ground? No, you don't. The Second Avenue subway has been talked about since 1919. And for various reasons, it was delayed, put aside, World War II, Korea, budgets. Apparently in 2007 they actually broke ground and they're building it. So they're in phase one of this uh, train route that's been talked about since 1919. The time has come. Let's go see some trains. The train's running down the length of the uh, old station platform here. So we can see what a few of these trains look like.
and we've reached the end. So it's really, really long. Trains look like they did back then and been restored. They don't smell like they did, so that's a plus. Check out this beauty here. It's a 1919 model. Signed to Cortland Street Mosaic. Made in 1918 and then removed in a refurbishing project in the 70s. All the kids are on that train. I think I'm going to go catch the next car up. This car is particularly notable as it was built in 1950. It was, this was the first subway car to have air conditioning. You can see instead of the fans, they've got air conditioning units in here. So that was very experimental when they put it on the trains. And they had problems where there was a lot of condensation and water puddling on the floor as well as uh, dropping on the passengers. So it was only on this car for like two weeks and then it was scuttled and they continued to work to try and solve the problem. I love the old ads that they have in these subway cars. As you can see, this is the old Court Street Station. And now they've got all these old subway trains here and it's really cool to walk through and check these out. The original ticket machine of the subway patented in 1894. And they started adding the elevated turnstiles in the 1900s electric turnstiles. But you didn't know there was such an amazing change in turnstile history. So that was New York Transit Museum. Amazing. Really cool. Very interesting place. I could spend even longer here if I wanted to, but I got things to do. So the next stop, we're going to be heading off to uh, Central Park. Time to get on a real working subway. And we're going to head all the way back into Manhattan and north on to uh, Central Park. See what we can find there. We made it to our next destination, Central Park. First stop we're going to make here in Central Park is Strawberry Fields. Right behind me is the Dakota, where John and Yoko live together. Right outside of this building is where John Lennon was shot. Yoko's still up there somewhere. Let's go check out the Strawberry Fields, the John Lennon Memorial here at Central Park. Despite the uh, rule on this sign here of no musical instruments, this bold young man here is playing Beatles songs on his guitar. Just in defiance. That's what rock and roll is all about. John Lennon probably would have liked that. So that's the John Lennon Memorial. Celebrity deaths don't really bother me too much. Uh, it's sad to see him go, but I, I'm not devastated uh, or gut-wrenched. But when John Lennon was shot, I was a kid and I woke up and heard the news in the morning that he was dead. Oh, I was devastated. I cut it, all the articles out of the paper for a week all about everything that was going on. And uh, I still have all those articles from, uh, from the newspaper from the week after he was shot. Everything that happened. His music and the memories live on. The scary thing here is that there are enough ice incidents that they need multiple rescue ladder stations. Why are so many people wandering out on the ice? It's dangerous. I haven't walked through Central Park the last couple of old times that I've been to New York 
and it's easy to forget just how vast it is. So Central Park was fun. Enjoyed walking through there, taking a little quiet scenic walk through the middle of the day. Now, I'm headed to uh, Levain Bakery, and I've been told has the greatest chocolate chip cookies on the planet. We're gonna spend way too much money on a chocolate chip cookie, and we'll see if these cookies live up to what they're supposed to be. We reached the place. It's busy. It's crowded. It's small. Do they really have the most incredible cookies ever? There's only one way to find out. Spend a ridiculous amount of money purchasing said cookies. So I got the cookies. Right here. They weren't as ridiculously expensive as I in, as I had previously understood, but they're four bucks a piece. So I bought a, a couple of different things so that I can try one now. And I can take one for my sister-in-law and my lovely wife Annette to try later. Just to give you a an idea of the size of this cookie. This cookie is enormous. Very thick. This one is a oatmeal raisin. I got a couple of different varieties. I got dark chocolate peanut butter chip, dark chocolate chocolate chip, and uh, cooked chocolate chip with walnuts. This is an oatmeal raisin for me. Look at this. It's like a whole meal. But now it is time to head back. The day is almost done. One or two more quick stops for me, but then uh, sooner it'll be time to pick up my sister-in-law, and then we're gonna have to get out of town. Isn't that the truth? We've been searching for Pappy for a couple of days now. We actually found him. I found him wandering right here in Times Square. He was right back here. He's wandered off again. I hope he didn't get on another subway. But uh, we found Pappy and he's safe, so that's good. It's been a pretty fun couple of days. It's a lot of fun. We'll be back. Wish Annette could have been here. Huh? Don't you wish you were here? She does. She wishes she was here too. So remember folks, what do I always tell you? Have a good time all the time.